previous in the middle segment I showed this frequency meter kit I got from Banggood and today I want to assemble this kit it is a, an entirely through hole kit so let's get to the assembly here are the tools that we're going to be using for assembling this kit I have my uh, adjustable soldering iron right here um, this is the kit I'm going to be using um, water soluble uh, core solder a pair of tweezers a water soluble flux a multimeter this is basically for checking the values of the resistors or for debugging and a pair of side cutters for cutting the leads of the components in here I have nine 1k resistors so I'm going to start the assembly by preparing these resistors I'm going to apply some flux on the back of the PCB where the solder joints will go Now one thing I always care for is the aesthetics of a PCB and it's not only aesthetics but mounting every resistor using the same orientation can also help when debugging if necessary at a later point. I'm normally using a fume extractor when soldering but right now because I'm doing this on video and I don't want the loud sound of the fan disturbing you I'm not using it. Notice how I'm keeping the PCB pressed upon the bench. This way I make sure all the components are flush with the PCB on the other side when they're soldered. Now we need to cut the leads of this because they really get in the way of assembling it further. For this make sure you check the orientation. In this case we have the cathode of the diode on this side marked by the black strip and we also see the same strip on the PCB marked in white. You should be extra careful when mounting the transistors. First check the numbers on them and make sure they correspond with the numbers on the silk screened PCB and then make sure you get the alignment right. I believe the correct orientation for the 7 segment modules is with the dot on the bottom side although they didn't mark that on the PCB in the seal screen that's the way it should go usually you would peel the protection skin off after you've soldered them but right now it appears it these are so close together that the actual protection foil doesn't allow me to place them precisely close together Sometimes the pins on these modules are bent and then, don't, then they don't easily align with the holes on the PCB so you have to manually align each pin over 
it's hot. Now let's also mount the last component, which is this tactile switch. Now the assembly is complete and it seems we are left with a 22 picofarad capacitor which is strange, Chinese kits usually don't include any spares so this must have been an error when counting the parts needed for this uh, particular bag. Now I have to give the board a good clean in water to remove the flux residue and after that I can uh, simply mount the microcontroller in the socket and power the kit. Ok, so now I have the board nice and clean, hopefully all the excess water has dried off. So now I'm going to attempt to mount the microcontroller in the socket. You need to be careful when aligning the key of the microcontroller with the key marked on the PCB on the silk screen and I have done that. Digging through the user comments on the Banggood website I did manage to find some uh, instructions in a PDF containing a schematic and actually that 22 picofarad capacitor that I thought was uh, placed by accident inside this kit is in fact uh, used when you're having trouble measuring low frequency uh, crystals and uh, it is shown in those uh, instructions it, you have to solder it uh, somewhere around here on the back of the PCB so I'll post a link to that PDF in the description of this video right here on this connector I have uh, 5 volts from my uh, linear uh, adjustable power supply so this is the first power one of the kit and it seems to be working let me turn off some of the lights in here so you can better see the LEDs yeah, unfortunately the camera's white balance is auto adjusting and you can't really see the brightness coming from the 7 segment LEDs. Let me just find the crystal oscillator that we can measure and test the kit. I have this 10.000 MHz crystal oscillator. Let's see what the meter says about it. The meter is in fact showing 10.000 MHz, so I'd say it's quite accurate. The kit also features these pin headers right here, which are not documented on the Banggood website. And what you can do is supply power through these uh, minus and plus pins. Right here you have a ground and a signal in pin. So what you can do is supply an external signal and measure it right here on this in pin. 
this is the input signal pin. My reading is quite stable for this 10 MHz crystal, so let me search another value and check for a higher value maybe. This is a 20 MHz crystal, actually a 20.000 MHz, so let's see what the frequency meter has to say about this. It's saying it's one hertz out. I'm not sure if that is visible on the camera, but it's saying 20.001 megahertz. Uh, it could be the crystal, it could be the kit itself. One hertz error is really not that bad. So I think we can say this was a successful assembly. The kit works as expected. And if you need something like this or you would enjoy assembly it, I recommend getting one. It's cheap and it works. Thank you for watching this video. All the links are in the description as usual. And don't forget to subscribe.